most of the top Yu-Gi-Oh decks in 2018 don't play any trap cards in their main deck. Even the more controlling strategies like Sky Strikers tend to play nothing besides infinite impermanence. Obviously, the combo decks out there like Goki and Dark Warrior and things of that sort don't play trap cards, but keep in mind it hasn't been this way forever. If you look back at 2012, even the heavier combo decks like Windups tended to play like 8 to 10 trap cards, which might seem pretty extreme, but trap cards for pretty much all of Yu-Gi-Oh's history except the last couple years have been in the metagame even in faster decks even in the combo decks. If you think back to 2014 which is where this switch really happened many of the sort of combo heavy decks like Sylvans and Dragon Rulers still played some trap cards. Very often they played things like Vanity's Emptiness and Dragon Rulers often played things like Skill Drain but after 2014 when we get to 2015 I think it's really Necro's format where we see people just cutting all trap cards entirely. Now trap cards have always had the same sort of issues that they have nowadays, it just matters more. And what I mean by issues is that the trap cards that you have in your deck don't really do anything going second unless they can be activated immediately from your hand like Evenly Mash or Infinite Impermanence or Red Reboot, but those cards, if we're being completely honest here, don't even really feel like trap cards. They feel more like hand traps because you're very rarely setting those cards. Out of all three of those cards that I just mention infinite impermanence it's the only one that you actually see set and i think that infinite impermanence is really good card design but we'll talk about that more in a little bit so in today's video i want to focus on why trap cards are seeing so little play in many meta decks out there pretty much the only decks that you see play trap cards anymore are altergeist and sometimes trick stars but really they're just playing reincarnation for the most part and most decks out there are just playing monster cards and spell cards so what happened to trap cards in today's video we're going to talk about that the first reason that I think trap cards aren't seen as much play anymore is there's this critical mass of back row destruction that we simply didn't have back in the day. So what I mean by a critical mass is that back in the day, we had cards like Heavy Storm and Mystical Space Typhoon, and even way back in the day, we had things like Harpy's Feather Duster. But for most of Yu-Gi-Oh's history, there hasn't been that many things that just generically kill back row. Mystical Space Typhoon was by far the most popular thing, but what happened as the years went on is Konami kept giving us more and more and more back row destruction and at this point you can kill pretty much all of your opponent's back row in every possible way that you can think of so we reached this critical mass and I think that it happened recently with Red Reboot. Obviously things like Cosmic Cyclone and Galaxy Cyclone and Twin Twisters led up to this happening but I don't think it was until Red Reboot came out where it's really like Konami is just saying hey if you play against a back row deck you can just have this card that will instantly win you every single game that you draw it. That's a pretty big deal because if you think of many of the combo decks of like 2012 that played a lot of back row the reason they did that is because well first off they weren't comboing off every single game but second off your opponent was forced to actually play through that back row it helped protect your board things like bottomless trap hole or psalm warning were really good at opposing monsters and preventing them from actually hitting the field whereas nowadays we don't really see that it seems like in 2018 at least if you're playing a deck with trap cards you better have a full back row at all times because uh, even ignoring like the red reboot issue if your opponent has something like twin twisters you need to have more than two back row you really even need to have more than three back row you want to have four back rows so that when your opponent twin twisters you you still are left with two options and not every deck can do that obviously altergeist can and kind of true dracos but other than that it's pretty hard besides uh, maybe like frog pilly zoics but that's just a rogue deck right now it's not actually in the meta another reason that playing back row decks is pretty difficult in 2018 is that it seems like many back row cards, especially the really good ones, are a finite resource. If you think of things like Solemn Strike and Solemn Warning, if those cards get hit by Twin Twisters in almost any deck that you're going to play trap cards in, you don't have a way of actually adding those cards back to your hand. It's a finite resource. On the other hand, if you get Dark Hold or Regekied, I don't think you're saying to yourself, oh man, I can never get those monsters back. Not only do monster cards usually have floating effects, and to be fair, some back row are able to float when they die like Cosmotown, but in general monster cards in 2018 at least have all of them have floating effects so they already did their job by the time that you have them on the board or more importantly you can just revive them with things like Monster Reborn or Soul Charge and it seems like pretty much every archetype out there has some way to get back monster cards so when monster cards are destroyed or banished you can usually get those back or you have multiple copies of them that you can just search out immediately. In the case of trap cards the reason that 
that it hurts so much when they're even just hit by a cosmic cyclone or twin twisters or evenly matched you usually can't get those cards back and in some cases you don't even have extra copies of those cards that are searchable some of the best trap cards in modern play you can't actually search which means that it really really hurts when your opponent gets rid of them unlike monster cards so when you're given the choice of playing a deck based around trap cards that you care about when they go to the graveyard or get banished or monster cards and spell cards that you don't care about going to the graveyard well obviously a lot of players are just going to choose the monster and spell route so that their deck is more resilient to destruction now i will say one good thing does come from this as someone that has played a lot of matches with altergeist at regionals and ycs's sometimes people over side deck for you and they draw too many of those back row destructions i think altergeist is a perfect example of this because they have really really strong monster cards whereas a lot of sort of trap decks don't have strong monster cards but oftentimes with altergeist i will set up like four back row my opponent will use double twin twisters but if you use double twin twisters and you're not discarding cards that immediately replace themselves like burning abyss monsters well now they only have two cards and even if they only have two cards sometimes they can combo off but a lot of the times they can't and one of the coolest things about altergeist in particular is that you have cards like multi faker that if you just chained any of the four trap cards that they blew up you still get sort of a pseudo disruption effect with the level two altergeist monster that lets you bounce an opponent's monster back to their hand i cannot tell you the amount of times that i've played against decks like goki and dark warrior where they were able to completely blow up my entire back row but they couldn't quite deal with the monsters on my field so that's a really huge advantage that altergeist has over other trap decks that might put more of their uh, strategy on the actual trap cards they put more value on those trap cards whereas altergeist at least has some unique monster effects to help protect you if your opponent wipes out your entire back row i can't say that for every single back row deck which is why altergeist are probably the most popular back row deck right now that actually plays trap cards not only can they recover from all, all their back row getting destroyed they also have multiple ways to actually add back back row cards to their hand after they've been destroyed like the level 2 altergeist monster this brings me to my last point in this video and that's what does it take for a trap card to be generically good enough to see play in decks that aren't altergeist that aren't true dracos and for the most part at least this year they have to be able to sort of uh, bypass the trap restriction of having to set them ahead of time so things like evenly matched red reboot and infinite impermanence can all be activated from your hand now evenly match was the first one that came out like this and the funny thing about that card is that they actually did put a lot of restrictions on it because you can only activate it during the battle phase or at the end of the battle phase really so if you go second you're skipping your entire main phase one and battle phase just to get rid of all your opponent's cards now obviously the matchups where that is good against is the matchups where your opponent is putting a lot of cards on the board and that usually can just win you the game right there but there are a lot of restrictions put on evenly match that people really don't remember until you get to red reboot where there aren't any restrictions on it you can activate it no matter how many cards you have on the board no matter which phase you're in even infinite impermanence restricts you from activating it if you have any cards which makes it a lot more fair but i think red reboot is sort of the pinnacle of just uh screwing over back row decks because you don't have to have any sort of setup to activate the card yes you have to pay half your life points yes your opponent gets a free plus one but in the decks that are playing red reboot they don't really care about those things because they're probably just going to otk the trap deck and i know it's kind of ironic because many trap decks like altergeist are just trying to floodgate the opponent out of the game and red reboot is a floodgate so it feels bad when it happens to me when i'm playing trap cards but in general red reboot is just sort of a big middle finger to all of those trap decks because it just shuts down everything and anything that they want to do and especially against altergeist because it negates the activation of the trap card you don't even get to summon a multi faker like you would if you got evenly matched and then chained a trap card or if you got twin twisters and chained a trap card as well but i mentioned at the beginning of this video that i actually do like the design of infinite impermanence and to an extent i kind of like the design of red reboot at least in one sense i feel that these trap cards that can be activated from your hand when you control no cards so not red reboot necessarily but infinite impermanence uh, i feel that they should get benefits when you actually set them like real trap cards in the case of infinite impermanence you get to lock down a spell and trap card zone for your opponent and that's extremely relevant and powerful especially against opponents that forget that that zone is locked down i don't know if this has happened to you guys but multiple times in the last events that i've played in i've used infinite impermanence at the start of my opponent's like main phase one on their first play and then later on in that turn they've accidentally activated a spell card in the column that infinite impermanence was in therefore it got negated because you can still activate cards in those columns they just don't resolve and that is a very skill intensive way to use infinite impermanence and i like that a lot now the reason i said i kind of like red reboot 
cute, not for what the card does, but for the fact that it also has a benefit from activating when it's set, and that's that you don't have to pay half your life points. I don't like the actual effect of Red Reboot, but I do think in general, if Konami is going to print more and more trap cards like this, that they should have benefits when they're set, so that they actually encourage people to set them. They're not just the same card that they are in the hand and on the field. I want to see some benefit to actually playing them like a real trap card. Anyway, though, hopefully you guys enjoyed today's discussion video on trap cards. Obviously, I play Altergeist a lot, so I'm very familiar with this topic. I think that trap cards are in a very awkward position, and I don't know where they're going to be in a couple years. It seems like Konami is really pushing the envelope and just giving people more and more options to actually kill back row decks, which I know not everyone likes playing against back row decks, but I think that there should be a diverse meta, and I think that there should be at least a couple control decks that use trap cards like Altergeist. Anyway, though, I'll see you guys later. Thanks so much for watching. Goodbye.